All right, so in this teaching video, I'm gonna go ahead and shade in my face, my portrait using my charcoal. So I have several pieces of willow, this stuff right here, or if you buy it at the store, remember it can also be called vine, V-I-N-E, charcoal. They're the same thing. So there's willow. And then I have my two different charcoal pencils. I have my 2B and my 6B, and I have my erasers. I have my kneaded eraser. Um, you're definitely going to want a sharpener. Hopefully you have a sharpener somewhere around because you probably need it. All right, so um, through this video, I'm just going to kind of talk about how I do stuff as I'm shading. Um, obviously, the nice thing about this is you can fast forward, you can pause, you can rewind um, as you're watching this. You can always watch um, secondary videos, like maybe you find other people that are doing similar projects and always watch those and get tips from those people. That's totally fine too. But I uh, prefer to watch my video first, obviously, and then if you want to do a secondary video. So side note, I am at home recording this and I have three dogs. So hopefully they stay quiet during all this, um, but they do like to bark randomly at things that are moving in the street. So, so you have your face, it's drawn in pencil in your sketchbook, okay? And um, by now, hopefully you've gotten an approval from me through Schoology in the comment section or maybe through email, something like that, to say, yes, you can move forward to now shading in your picture. All right, so, and hopefully you're able to print out your picture in black and white or grayscale. That would be really nice too, because then, you see the values really well and it helps you. If you can only do color, that's fine too. Um, and if you need me to print it out at school and then pick it up, that's totally fine too. We can work something out. All right, so the first thing that I like to do is I like to kind of shade in like the base where I see um, my values on my picture. I'm trying to get it to where you guys can see both of my things. Um, what I'm not doing is I didn't come around and start outlining my features, okay? We never want to outline stuff because then you are trying to get rid of that outline later on. So all I'm doing is I'm just kind of always looking back at force at my reference, back to here, and I'm just kind of shading in just a light gray coat of with willow. Your nose, remember, see how I'm going at an angle with my nose? I don't really need to shade much over here because it's kind of a light gray. I'll probably get to that later. But like right now, I'm just putting in where I see my darkest values um, on my, my picture over there, my reference. So I'm just doing a light coat just to kind of get me started because it's kind of daunting at first. Like, oh my gosh, I don't want to put anything down. What if I mess up? Well, if you mess up, anything's fixable because we're working with charcoal and you can usually erase it away. That is. And now I'm going to kind of soften it a little bit just to kind of get something there. Maybe I'll put my eyebrow there. See how I don't really do much here because it's going to be lighter there. Um, so there's really no point to do much charcoal over here. I may do a light coat later on. That's very much later on. If you want to get your little tick marks, marks and sketch lines out of the way, erase that stuff before you start shading, you can totally do that. I should have done that first, but I kind of just went into this just so that they're not there and you can move them out of the way. Okay. So, what I'm doing right now is just putting in a light coat. And you know, see how I'm using my willow? I'm not making lines. I'm using it to where it's always just like a soft, oops, can't even see that a soft um, 
fill. I'm just like my strokes are always really close together. Don't want scratchy lines ever with your charcoal pencils, with your willow, never ever. Now, when we get to hair, when we want to see texture, then yes, you will want to see lines, but it has to be lines that are going in the right direction and doing the right thing, not just like scribbly lines. And then also when it comes to the time where you're adding in this willow and then my charcoal pencils in a minute, you know, if my pencil sketch wasn't 100% right, you know, as you're shading it in, things are always changing and evolving and moving. Um, you're always going back and forth and looking at your shapes and everything. So, all right, so now I kind of have just like a rough grayness on my face. And also, I'm, as I'm noticing, whoa, here comes the sun. So see, <laughs> oh no, the sun is coming out and now my face, I'm gonna have to pause. All right, so I had to change rooms. Um, I was in my kitchen that had, has skylights and clearly when the sun came out, couldn't see anything that was happening. So I'm in a different room and I'm not a fan of the lighting because as you can kind of see, it's a little yellow, but you can actually see what I'm doing. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my eyes, just like what we did with our little samples that you guys had to do. You all had to do two pairs of eyes. And so now I'm just gonna treat and do this eye all by itself, just like when I would have done for my references. So I'm lightly coming in just with my willow still. Maybe leave that circle there because I know there's a little bit of a glare. Remember, I like to add a little bit of value around my eyes because then I'm gonna have to erase out that waterline area. And I'm coming in and darkening certain areas that are darker. And I'm gonna fix the shape of my eye too as I'm doing this. So maybe now I wanna start adding a little bit of charcoal pencil to define everything. I'm gonna use my 2B again. Again, you can use what you prefer. I'm gonna go ahead and start and erase that waterline there to get that out of the way. And I'm going to fill in my pupil. It's like the darkest area. Erase out the glare. I'm going to start filling in my iris. And my left corner of my eye there is kind of gray. It's kind of dark. So somehow I have to make the gray area in my eye, a little bit different values to discern those two. My eyelid is a little darker there. So I'm always looking back and forth at my reference and what's happening on my actual drawing. Darker in here. And you're never like pressing super hard. You're never like, well, this area is dark, so I need to press really hard. You never want to do that. It's always layering because the more you layer, the more charcoal you're going to have to work with. So I kind of started coming down on my nose a little bit, just ever so slightly, just because it was where my eye was. And I'm going to clean that up. Maybe I have a tiny whiny line. I need to sharpen my pencil because it's kind of dull. If you have nice value under your eyes, make sure you like reinforce that. I'm going to darken this up a little bit. And so depending how your picture printed out, you may have to exaggerate your values. Um, and what does that mean? That means making them darker than what they really are. 
um, because we want contrast. Okay, we don't want all of our values to be the same gray, light gray. Maybe if you remember from art one, and I'm looking at your stuff, I'm always like, make it darker or push it more or add more values. That's what I mean by like darkening. I think still I'm using my 2B. This whole thing could be done with my 2B really. I'm gonna pull my, I need to pull my eyelid down more on top of my iris. I don't like how that's lifted there. I'm gonna bring this over so you can see my eye that I'm working on. Um, and what I like to do when I work on stuff is I kind of work a little bit and then I move around. Um, because it's like, okay, I'm going to leave that for a while and I'll come back to it. Because sometimes then when I come back to it, I'm coming back to it with a fresh perspective. And it's like, oh my goodness, what was I thinking when I was previously there? Okay, so eyebrows. Uh, my eyebrows are kind of light. So what I did earlier was I, I put willow in the shape of my, where my eyebrow was. And now I'm going to come in with my pencil and it's nice and sharpened. And you're going to look at the direction of where that hair of your eyebrow is moving. It's probably going to be moving that way or away from the center usually. And so the inner part of my eyebrow is a little bit light. It's like a light gray. And then for mine, they get a little bit darker over here or more pronounced. And then you're probably like, wow, her eyebrows are not that dark. Well, then what I'm going to do, and what you'll have to do, is probably come in with one of your erasers and kind of soften them a little bit. And then when you do that, you're even kind of like erasing out little highlights and making them lighter. To clean your pencil top eraser, you can just kind of clean it on another sheet of paper. That's what I was doing up there. Um because sometimes that makes a difference because if it's dirty, then it'll kind of keep smudging. And then I'm going to kind of soften this skin area. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Your eraser, your eraser is just as important as your charcoal. It does just as much. It takes away and it highlights and it's just as important as your charcoal. All right, I'm kind of happy with that for now, and then I'll come back later. So now I'm going to shade in this darker area of my forehead. And so, you know, I have my willow underneath. You know, that willow was down first. Maybe now I will switch to my 6B pencil because it's pretty dark over here. So remember, and so see how I'm going at an angle? I'm not like going horizontally or going vertically. I'm going at an angle because our forehead is round and it's curved. So I want it to gradually kind of curve. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit more of this. It's almost like the sphere from our charcoal forms. I mean, really that's all it is. It's just kind of like different shapes. That's all it really is. Your face, your portrait, everything, it's all just these different shapes and we're trying to figure out how to get it all to gradually blend from dark to light. So I'm going to darken this and I'm layering and I'm keeping my strokes really close together. I'm always kind of going at an angle. And then I always come back and soften it with my finger. If you have one of those like blending stumps or um, rolled paper things that are called tortillons. You can use those too. I'm not a fan of them personally for what I do, but you can use it. I feel like my finger gets the job done and see how I had to erase kind of where my previous pencil marks were. So that's kind of annoying, but it's okay. All right. Now we're going to move on to the nose, let's say. So over here, my picture is really nice and dark, um, but I don't want to lose this nostril over here, at least for my picture. I can still see my nostril and I still see a little bit of skin right here. I know because that's kind of hard for you to see right now. 
So remember in our practice noses, there was like this sphere down here. So for my nose, I have most of my value on the left side. So I'm gonna kind of imagine that sphere and it's darker there on the left. And then as I go up my nose, I'm at an angle, like what I said in my other videos. I'm not up and down, I'm not horizontal, I'm also going at an angle. And then I'm gonna soften it. Maybe also what I'll do is add a little bit of value here, like in the middle part of my nose. And you know, if you have access to a printer, so when you're doing your charcoal part, if these lines are annoying to you and they're kind of in the way, then I would print out my picture again um, after I had my marks on it, after I drew it, and then you would have a fresh um, picture so you don't have like those lines in the way when you're like trying to shade it in. That's just up to you. As you can see, I did not do that, and that's okay. So I'm back to using my 2B pencil, just if you wanted to know. So again, I'm trying to reinforce that shape down there of my nose. This is really dark. And I'm looking at the shape of this value and what it's doing. Okay, I'm looking at that, I'm trying to put it over here. It's all about shapes. And now I'm going to come in. My nostril area is a little bit darker. I'm going to try and make that darker than the rest of my nose. It's going to be kind of tricky. I'm probably going to have to come in with my eraser here in a second. I need to fix this shape. I'm not very happy with it. Let's say you're, you know, shading your portrait as this is plain. You know, have it plain in the background. Um, maybe some of the things that I'm saying are going to be helpful reminders when you're working on stuff. You know, you could be shading yours at the same time I'm shading mine. Again, you can stop, you can pause it. So that's kind of the nice part about this. So now what I'm doing, I'm trying to get the curve of this area of my nose happening. And then what I did is I came in with my pencil top eraser to kind of soften this area. I just want to see it a little bit more. And so then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to darken this area on the other side of my nostril. Because when I darken that, it makes like my nostril area kind of pop out. And then I kind of softened and brought a little bit of charcoal off to my cheek area, but not too much because I have kind of like a little highlight right here. So there's my highlight. So I don't want to bring too much over. Let's stick it in this little area erased. So as you can see, I moved away from my nose. I'll come back later. Noses. And where does your value lead into your eyebrow? You know, it just kind of depends. Sometimes if your eyebrows are really light, you just have like a little bit of willow there and then you kind of come in with your eraser and then take away with your eraser and then like lightly feather in a little bit of charcoal pencil. I need to kind of soften this back a little bit. I remember usually after I erase, I usually have to soften and blend what I just did. All right, let's move on to my lips now for a little bit. So again, just like your um, practice lips, again, I'm gonna lightly fill them in. Mine are really thin, so they're kind of tricky. 
I want to lightly fill them in. See how I did not outline them before I filled them in? I'm just putting in a little bit of gray because once you have a little bit of something there, then you can take away or add. You have to have something to start with. And then when you move to your lips, you always want to find out what's happening around your lips. So it's really dark right here. I have a shadow, so I'm going to darken that. And my chin area is a little bit dark. And, you're like, and I did already kind of darken this earlier, but I want to come back again because maybe it's gotten a little lighter. Maybe things have changed. And I don't want too much on this side, but I can erase that if I feel like I took put too much there. And then I'm also going to make sure it's open enough. And then I'm going to bring value all the way down to my lip because I know I'm going to have to erase parts of my lip to make the highlights so I want to be able to see it when I do. So before I move on, I'm going to make this area a little bit darker here right next to my lip. Like that. And this is like a highlighted area, so I'm going to... and reinforce that. So I'm always kind of still always checking stuff to make sure to make sure I have things in the right spot. All right, so maybe now what I'm going to do, I'm going to first take away before I add. So I'm going to take away some of these little highlighted places. You could do opposite and add. What does that mean? You could add value or add your charcoal pencil rather than erase. Like right now I'm erasing, taking away. All right, so now I don't have very dark lips, so I'm just gonna hang out with my 2B pencil. And again, you gotta be super careful with lips. They can go wrong pretty quickly. And if you remember how we did it in our little practice lips, you're gonna try to kind of get a curve going. And they're probably going to be really small because we're working in our sketchbook. So it's going to be kind of tricky. And small areas, you know, that, that is a good time to have your little blending stump or that tor blending tortillon, that rolled up paper. So yeah, that is a good time for that. But I usually just make do. I'm trying to reinforce that dip in my lips. And it's kind of annoying that I have my mark right here, but so that's why it would be nice to have a nicer a printed out um, newer one without the lines. Just gonna lightly, and they're so light and thin, it's really tricky. And see how over here I darken that because that's inside my mouth, so I made that a little bit darker. And I'm not outlining my lips. You're never putting like super dark outlines. And also when you're shading your lips, you want to remember again what's happening around your lips. That's also really crucial because that helps shape your lips. It's dark in here. So now my skin right here, it's kind of starting to blend in with my lips. So I need to kind of try to get that to be different because I don't want those two things to blend. So either I need to soften something or I need to darken something. I'm gonna come down now to this area of my face and my chin. I'm going to start darkening that. And sometimes the value on your face is so light, all it is is just a little bit of willow. Sometimes you don't have to go over it with your charcoal pencil. I'm going to add a little bit to my lip because as I was looking over here, I need a little bit more there. This shadow right here by my nose is a lot darker. So 
see how I'm curving, I'm shading in, like with my cheek, I'm like curving my finger to go with the shape. So I'm darkening over here now. The shadow on this side of my face is its own shape. The highlights are their own shapes. And I'll come back to my notes. All right. So now I'm leaving my lips alone for a while. I'm going to go ahead and go to this next eye. So again, now I need to come back, make sure that it's in the right spot. Looks okay. I'm going to make sure that this is erased as best as possible. So again, I'm going to add a, some felt. It's a lot lighter on this other eye. And for most of you, it probably will be too. So I'm just going to put a little bit of something there. My eyelid has nice value on it. It's nice gray. And then, and as you can see, I haven't even done my eyelashes yet. That's usually like the very last thing that I'll ever do when I'm completely done with the whole thing. And like for my face, it's really light right here. So, but then again, depend, depending on yours, you know, pay attention to what yours is doing. The shapes that are around your eyes. Okay, so now I'm going to come up with my pencil and I need to start cleaning this up and defining things. Hopefully you can get your pupils and your irises to be the same sizes as each other. That's tricky. When you do that, you can always like take a little measurement. You know, that next eye of yours, it's probably going to be um, a different shape than the other eye because depending if your face was turned, you know, um, it will be. It will maybe smaller, maybe bigger. It just depends on the angle that you took your picture. So I don't think they have to like be the exact same size and the exact same shape because they probably won't be. We're going to be doing something a little bit different. Even if you were looking just straightforward at your camera, I mean, you're not completely and perfectly symmetrical. Um, there's always subtle differences in all of our faces. So this needs to come down more. When I'm doing it, I'm also looking at my previous eye too. I'm always checking. Okay, so now I'm, I'm gonna leave that alone for a little bit. Now I'm gonna work on this cheek. This cheek had my light shining on it. So it's really light over here. So I may just do like a really light coat of willow. But if you're smiling or if you have like cheeks curving, pay attention to those. Sometimes you're just doing a little bit and sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes over here on the other side of your um, your nose, the lighter part of your nose, sometimes you may need a little bit of a little bit of willow. And then after you add it, you may be like, "Oh, geez, that was way too much," you know, like I just did. But I did that because I wanted to see. And then what I'm going to do in a second is I'm going to take some of it away. And then when I oh, when you're doing that, you're kind of fixing the shape of all this stuff. Ooh. 
fingers have charcoal on them, so they're all dirty. That's okay. And I'm kind of going angle. I don't want a big line down the middle of my nose, so that's also a really hard area for people to get this to blend from dark to medium to light. Sometimes you're going to have a bit of a highlight here on this side, and that highlight is helping um, shape your nose. I totally just erased part of my nostril. So this highlight over here, where I'm at, is kind of helping shape my nose. So that's kind of like creating that edge. I need to bring that in. Look at the lighting here around underneath your nose and above your lips, that area. You can't see it, but on my picture, this area is a little bit lighter than the rest of my nose. So that's why I'm kind of leaving it like that, especially so that I can see it. And I want to kind of add a little bit of dusting down here underneath that part of my nose to so see how it's kind of creating this division. It's This is tricky. Sometimes your values are super subtle. And it takes a really fine and trained eye to find these things sometimes and really like studying your picture. And then again, working with the materials. That's the tricky part. It's like, yeah, maybe I see it, but now I have to like manipulate these materials. And that's why this just, it's tricky, it comes with a lot of practice. So I kind of have this cheek area and I'm making sure that shape somewhat is correct over here before I start to, I have to be really careful because I don't want that cheek area to get too dark and I don't want it to be like a line. So that's always really hard is if you have something like this happening and then when you're working on this side or it just depends on how your picture is but there's nothing over here so the background comes into play and that all the background also comes into play with shaping your face like the actual shape of your face so like as you add your background you're also paying attention to, did I draw the shape of my face correctly? And if not, then you have to fix it. And even when you start to put in your hair, that also plays a part in the shape of your face, which is what I'm trying to kind of do. I'll come back. Oh, let me get this other eyebrow up here. So this one's really, really light too. And it's a little bit different shape. So I'm going to just go really light with my willow. Barely anything. I need something there so that I can take away. And so it's really light lines and I want to look at where it is in relation to my eye. I don't want to add more than I need. Really light lines. And then maybe I come in with my eraser to soften it. And even again, my eraser is creating that texture, that value. I don't have too much value around this eye. Sometimes I can kind of add more than I have. 
just because. Highlight there or glare. Maybe add a little bit in there. Try to create that tiny waterline area. Clean up this. So yeah, one side of your face may just have really soft lighting, if any. And then I'm going to kind of lighten this all the way up to my lips. I'm going to come down here to my chin. My chin may be just like a medium gray. I'm going to kind of soften this in here. Maybe I'll darken this a tiny bit. What is happening over here? It's kind of like a weird highlight. Then your neck, whatever values are happening on your neck, are you also usually help framing the shape of your face. Okay, so now I need to get this a little bit darker. And then we're going to talk about hair. And then as I see, I'm curving my eraser. That doesn't need to be there, that line. All right, hair, I'm going to move this over so that then we can see both a little bit. So I'll probably have to do more demo videos on different types of hair because mine is just straight. So again, I'm using my willow and look at what I'm doing. I'm literally filling in the whole place where my hair is. It's just going to be like a light gray. See, I was using... I'm not even doing lines right now. I'm just doing, because the lines and the texture is going to come out when we get our pencil. But it's not super, super dark. You know, I'm just doing a light coat. Um, and then, but then right here on my picture, oops, if you can see, it's, it's really light right here. I have blonde hair, so that's where my light was shining. So then when I come to my actual picture, I probably will keep it even lighter here because that's going to be where I'm going to have to like really erase. All right. So then after I've added it, then I soften it with my finger like always. All right. So then what I like to do first is I like to come in with my eraser. Okay. Hopefully you can kind of see this a little bit. I have some little bits of highlights or lighter values. So with my, I like to use my pencil top eraser when I do this because usually it has a nice clean edge and there's like a nice point on it. So where I see these light values, well, I'm going to do that. I'm going to try and create the hair now with my eraser. <sighs> Maybe you do a little extra here and there. It's not like it's going to be that big of a deal. And then my hair is pretty straight. So now I'm just using my pencil eraser to do just straight 
And so when you do this, you're going to have like a lot of eraser savings. So instead of like wiping it away with your hand, then your whole face goes away. You want to like, as you can hear, I'm blowing to get that stuff away. And then you can kind of press on it a little bit to soften it. And then I'm not going to do much up here. I'll come back to that later because that's a little bit darker. And then now what we're going to do is start adding the value the, or the darker values, the lines, the texture, the curls, whatever kind of hair you have. So I am going to use my 6B with this just because I want it to get dark pretty quick. So I'm kind of following this dark value or the shape and I'm not like coloring it in. I'm going to actually use my lines with my pencil because I want to be able to see this texture now. So now, so this is part of my face, but I'm not, there's like this weird backlight here, this side light value that's happening. So it's kind of fabulous. So I want to see this texture now. And sometimes I may come onto my highlighted areas because it's not like strictly white. And when you do, that's okay too. And then you can like kind of press on it so that it blends in a little bit or just leave it alone. So to get places of your hair that are really dark, dark, you're going to keep adding these lines. And it may get to the point where it did look like you like shaded it in completely. And that's okay too, but you'll know you had lines and texture. So there's some like flyaways that are happening up here. So then with that, I've added with my pencil. And then now I'm kind of taking away with my eraser to kind of, ooh, soften it. I kind of exaggerated those, but that's okay. Um, So then, the whole time, I'm coming back and forth with my pencil and eraser. So it's really dark over here, so I'm going to, and then I kind of, so I'm like layering it a lot to get it darker. There's a bright area right here. so. Maybe before I add, I'm gonna kind of take away a little bit more. And now I'm gonna use my 2B because it's a lighter value. Because that 6B gets dark so fast. I don't really want that. So then there's a little bit of darkness here. So I'm trying to kind of think of these values in my hair as like their own kind of shapes also. So maybe over here. A little bit lighter gray. So again, your your eraser now becomes just as important as your charcoal pencil. It's they're equally as important because your eraser is also helping now create these values. And if this white paper over here is bothering you and you don't want it, like I can create more of a background because then once I done, have done that, because sometimes you may have like really light hair and you need to see like those bits of highlights. And the only way to do that is if you've kind of created that background and then you can erase away. Do I have an earring? Yeah, I do have an earring right here. So I could have left it. I could have taken it away, whatever. I'll just put it there. And also when you're adding your hair, you're going to want to keep checking the shape of your face. And what that's doing. What's happening here? I need to add a little bit more. Okay, 
right, so we'll move on to this side of my hair. And hopefully we see, because it's a little bit different. It's a little bit lighter here. So, it's sticky right out of the way. So then like this, you know, again, it's, um, it's really light here, but I need a background because it'll be hard for me to see this if I don't have a background. So I'll come in with my willow and go ahead and put in a background. Whoops, don't go over my shoulder. So again, I know this teaching video is really long. If you're still with me, that's awesome. Um, but again, you can always pause, fast forward, rewind, you know, that's kind of the nice thing about this. Okay. So now I'm going to do up here, this area, this light area. Um, I need to get it to where I can see and you can see, but we'll just do that. So again, I'm, what, what am I going to do first? I'm going to use my eraser to, um, erase this out to lighten it. And I'm right-handed, so now I'm kind of covering it with my hand. That's okay. So I erased that a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add dark. And so when I'm doing this, I'm looking at the direction of where my hair is going, too. So, you know, I'm intentionally going to be making my lines go, go down and be pulling into that lightness. And it's curving up here. Maybe I need to use my 6B to get it a little bit more darker faster. So again, I'm using these lines because I want to see this texture now. And there's just a little bit of dark value over here. Maybe there's a little bit of value coming from the other side. And then you're probably thinking, oh no, she got it too dark. Well, that's okay. I'll be able to pull it away with my eraser soon. No worries. And then I also want to get this a little bit darker. The fun little shadow that I can add. That probably got too dark, so I'm going to take it away. Okay, I'm going to come in and really reset out. See how I'm always kind of having to check back and forth to see what's happening. So I think this is too bumpy here, so now I'm going to come in with my background willow and kind of clean that shape up a little bit. I added some stuff up here to get that darker. there for a while and then I need to get this hair down here on my other shoulder hmm. so it's dark right here from my shirt so I, I want to make that definitely darker than what's happening in my background so you don't have to do it with mm, your charcoal pencil I don't know it just depends what you want to do I could shade it in probably I will actually I'll shade it in with my 6B to get that a little bit darker. Because a lot of you will probably have some fabric or shirt in yours. Because I want that definitely not to blend in with my background. So then there's a lot of like fluff and flyaway right here. And so I'll be able to see it here in a second because I've made this all gray. So, and this is also really light, this bit of my hair, because that's where my light was coming from. And so now what I'm going to do with my eraser is just kind of erase out these little bits of hair. And now I'm going to go down. And we'll clean that up here in a second. So maybe with my 2B, my 2B pencil, because I don't want this to get too dark, 
come back and reinforce some of these lines. When you do that, you kind of add a little bit and then you press it a little bit. Maybe where I erased, I'm going to kind of try and get these lines be really nice and thin. Kind of just sprinkling them in. Maybe there's a shadow. And then after I've done that, kind of dirtied it up and I want to come back and clean it up. So kind of always like reworking your hair back and forth, back and forth, like trying to make all these different levels of values. Most of people, by the time they get to the part of their hair, they're just frustrated and tired of shading in their portrait, but you can't let the hair go because it's pretty important. I think shading in the hair is a lot of fun, but that's just me, obviously. But you, can't, you don't want to just let it go. You got to really work at it because those values have to build, build up over layers of lighting and darkening. Let's see what it looks like on my screen. All right, not too bad. Let me go with that. Okay, so that's not done, obviously. Um, it does look really nice. I'm pretty pleased with it, but this has been going on for about 50 minutes here. So lastly, I'm gonna put in a little bit of my eyelashes. I'm just going to use my 2B pencil, and mine are kind of, I don't even know where mine are, they're kind of just like there. So, you know, again, make sure your pencil is sharpened really well, and mine are really tiny. I don't really have much. You can't overdo it if you don't really have them, tragically. Um, can I see my bottom ones? Not too well, because my line is in the way, so I'm just going to kind of sprinkle those on, but don't go overboard. And then I'm gonna do these over here. I gotta be able to get my arm. Again, I don't really see them. They're really light, but I do need something there. I can see them here on this area. And don't really see them here at the bottom either. I get snorting these eyelashes. Oh well. Maybe now I want to come back and fix my eye. Hmm. All right. We will call it pretty good. Hopefully you can see most of it. Oh. Didn't even finish my neck. Now I'm noticing that. I gotta shade that area in and kind of darken it and see how I'm curving the pencil because it's curving form itself. Oh my goodness, Miss Martin, we're gonna talk about the teeth. Okay, we're not done. So teeth, if you have teeth in your picture, hooray for you. So don't go crazy with the teeth. You're just gonna lightly dust them in, meaning just kind of lightly, if you have, if you can see your gums a little bit, you're just gonna add a little bit there and I'm lightly outlining. I'm like barely touching um, this tooth back here. It is a little bit darker gray, so I am going to kind of darken that. Don't give them super dark outlines because then it might not turn out well. You can kind of put a little bit of willow that's maybe left over on your finger on them just to give them a little bit of a value. Don't get them too dark or they're going to look a bit dirty. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants dirty teeth. I'm getting these a little bit darker here on the left because there's less lighting. Then I want to come in and soften them with my eraser. Yeah. 
because the gums in your teeth are darker than your actual teeth. That's why I was like coming over them and darkening. No, no, I'm gonna kind of lighten that. Like I said, I'm not super duper done, but hopefully this video can help you through some stuff when you're doing yours, your charcoal portrait. All right.